wrenching testimony from a young widow who witnessed the murder of her beloved husband. This is the first of four trials in an infamous carjacking case outside an upscale mall in New Jersey on a night that turned from celebratory to a nightmare. I saw him put the gun to Dustin's head and I heard bang, bang, shh. Chilling testimony as Jamie Friedland recounts the moment her husband, 30-year-old Dustin Friedland, was murdered right before her eyes. And it was so fast. This week, the first of four men accused of this 2013 murder is on trial. What had been a good day became the worst day of Jamie's life and the last day of Dustin Friedman's life. This man, 36-year-old Basim Henry, charged with carjacking, unlawful possession of a weapon, and first-degree murder. Prosecutors say Henry drove the getaway car. He's pled not guilty. It was December 15, 2013, just days before Christmas. Jamie and Dustin Friedland were leaving the Short Hills Mall in New Jersey. They just finished dinner to celebrate their anniversary and the purchase of their new condo. We walked to the car. He um, opened the car door for me, as he always, always did. She got in and buckled her seatbelt while Dustin walked around the back of the car. She says she heard muffled conversation and thought her husband was making friends. I turned around and I saw Dustin standing in the middle of um, a person, a man on each side of him. Then seconds later, gunfire. I saw him put the gun to Dustin's head and I heard bang, bang, shh, and then the, and then the window shattered of the car. And then, like in slow motion, it played out. I saw the taller, the taller guy, I saw him walk around and he opens the car door, he leans in, he points the gun in my head and he said, get out of the car. And I said, okay, I'm okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Mall goers nearby also heard the shots. As soon as I walked out, I just heard, pow, pow, pow. so I just dug. I just heard screaming like, just at the top of her lungs. The mall was immediately put on lockdown. They said that there was an emergency and that was nobody could go out the building. According to Jamie Friedland, as her husband Dustin lay shot on the ground, the two suspects ordered her to get out of the car. Within seconds, they sped off with the Friedland's Range Rover. Well, the car door slammed and they skidded out of there. I just knew, I knew when I turned around, I knew what I was gonna see. What did you see? I turned around and I, thank you. I turned around and I saw Justin laying there in a pool of blood. And I ran over to him and I, could, I couldn't get my phone to work because I just got it at the Apple store. It was just right when the, the thumbprint came out and I couldn't, we programmed it at dinner because I thought it was so cool and I couldn't figure out how to unlock my phone to call 911. And so I leaned down, I was on the floor covered in his blood and he was covered in his blood. And I held my hand to his head and I, I was screaming. I was screaming, stay with me, stay with me. And I see his eyes and he's looking at me and he's gasping for breath. An onlooker called 911. Jamie Friedland waited in the parking garage, holding her husband in her arms, trying to keep him alive. When you were holding Dustin, were you able to communicate with Dustin? I was screaming, stay with me, stay with me. His eyes were following me, they were focused on me, he was blinking. He was gasping for breath, but I, I know he heard me. I know he heard me, but otherwise he wasn't, he could, he, he could not talk, no. According to Friedland, 30 minutes later, the ambulance still had not arrived. 911, is this an emergency? Yes, it's an emergency. I'm in Short Hills, Mall 41. My husband has been stopped. She called the ambulance half an hour ago. Where is he? They're at the motor, trying to get to you, ma'am. The ambulance was there, but unable to clear the low ceiling of the mall's parking garage. Emergency responders had to use a gurney to bring Dustin down. He was then transported to the hospital. The doctors then came up to me and told me that there was nothing else they can do. 
She's a critical witness in this case, not just because she can provide the human side of the impact this had, but because she was there. She's the eyewitness who saw it all happen. So she's important both emotionally and in terms of actual testimony. She's filed a civil lawsuit against both the mall owners and the security company, claiming they didn't provide adequate security. If you invite the public to shop at your mall, you better make sure it's safe. This mall didn't, and they need to step up to the plate and take responsibility. The mall attorney tells ABC News they don't comment on pending litigation, and the security company denies any wrongdoing, placing the blame on the four suspects. Here you have the defendant, someone who's accused of murder, talking about possible prison time for life. In the civil cases, you're talking about responsibility, money damages, and there it is the mall being sued. But security video shows Dustin may have been the victim of elaborate planning. This footage released by Jamie Freeland's attorney allegedly shows the killer's SUV in the same parking lot three days before the murder. Her attorneys say on this day, the suspects first stock this white SUV in their two-tone suburban before they appear to tail it out of the mall. My colleague Ryan Smith sat down with retired NYPD detective Nick Casal. So they're testing security at this point? Yes, and they're confident that they can, they can do their carjacking whenever and however they want. Now look at this video from the day of the murder. That lurking two-tone suburban is back parking next to a white car. They're hunters and they're looking for their prey. But minutes later, with no shoppers in sight, the car is driven over to the next parking lot where prosecutors say they find their target, the Friedland's SUV. And that is when, according to police, they take his life and his car. And I just knew, I knew when I turned around, I knew what I was gonna see. In this case, all four suspects are being tried separately. So this widow will potentially have to testify three more times as the rest of the accused see their day in court.